You're my calm in the chaos My peace in the war You speak light into darkness You tell me I'm yours Only you, Jesus, are in control You are my every heartbeat Every breath that I breathe You're all I need This is our last week of our Make the Waves series. What you do today can change the world around you. And today we're going to learn all about self-control and having um, control over the things that we say. And our memory verse for the month of July is, God begin a good work in you, and I am sure that he will carry it on until it is completed. That will be on the day Christ Jesus returns. Philippians 1. Six. And the most important thing to remember from today's Bible story is God gives you the power to have self-control. Let's dive in in today's Bible story. Hello again, everyone. I'm Haley. I don't know about you, but where I'm from, it gets really hot in the summertime. You have to... Think of different ways to cool down. Oh. This is amazing! Uh. <sighs> but what really helps me when the temperature is hot is a nice, cool, refreshing soft drink. <sighs> yes, now we're ready to make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. Normally, when you think of waves, you think of water, but you can also make waves of love and kindness. And you can make waves by having self-control. Well, I can think of a lot of ways we lose self-control with food, with video games, with our tempers. Sometimes we want to do something so badly that, you know, we just do it without thinking about the consequences and the excitement just build and and build until eh, I think you know what happens next we lose control and a lot of the time we make a big mess self-control means keeping the lid on the bottle 
In today's story, we'll talk about where we need self-control most of all, with our words. I better put this somewhere safe. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Inspired by the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. The book of James in the New Testament was most likely written by... Aha! You guessed it! James. But this James wasn't just a close friend or follower of Jesus. James was actually Jesus's brother. <laughs> okay, can you imagine growing up with Jesus as your brother? He and James might have wrestled or played ball or uh, thought of inventions just like any other brothers. But eventually, James also came to believe that Jesus is God's son, the one sent to save the entire world. <laughs> I'm mind blown. I, James, am writing this letter. I serve God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, think about it seriously. What would it take for you to even consider that your brother was the savior of the world? James saw that the power of God's spirit was with Jesus, and James himself experienced that same power when Jesus returned to heaven. In his letter to a group of Jesus followers, James shares some practical wisdom. He makes it clear that if you believe in Jesus and rely on the power of God's Spirit, then your life should look like it. My brothers and sisters, most of you shouldn't become teachers. That's because you know that those of us who teach will be held more accountable. All of us get tripped up in many ways. Suppose someone is never wrong in what they say, then they are perfect. They're able to keep their whole body under control. James wrote that one of the toughest things you'll ever have to control in life is you. The things you do, and especially the things you say, make a big difference in the world around you. And just like Jesus used stories, James painted some pretty amazing word pictures to help us understand. We put a small piece of metal in the mouth of a horse to make it obey us. We can control the whole animal with it. Think of a horse. Horses are strong, powerful animals, but when this tiny piece of metal is placed in a horse's mouth, even a small person can easily control that huge horse. James gives another word picture too. And how about big ships? They are very big. They are driven along by strong winds, but they are steered by a very small rudder. It, it makes them go where the captain wants to go. Imagine a huge sailing ship. Some ships built now are so big, they're like floating cities. But ships don't come with brakes. They can't be stopped over a short distance. That makes it super important for a pilot to be able to steer easily. Here's what directs the ship, a rudder. Compared to that ginormous floating city of a ship, the rudder is tiny, but a single adjustment in the angle of the rudder controls the path of that entire ship. Not too long ago, there was this huge container ship called the Ever Given that was traveling through the very narrow Suez Canal. While the winds were really high and the pilot just lost control, the rudder of that ship didn't do its job and that huge container ship wedged tight. The canal was blocked for six days. Hundreds of ships were stuck behind it and couldn't pass. Shipping around the whole world was backed up. All of that could have been prevented if the pilot had controlled the ship's rudder. Which brings us back to this. In the same way, the tongue is a small part of a person's body, but it talks big. Everything that comes out of your mouth and the words that you write or type can change the direction of your day, your week, your entire life. Maybe your best friend makes you mad and a really mean insult pops into your head. If you let that fall out of your mouth, but it could just ruin the day for both of you and even destroy your entire friendship. James gives us one more word picture to illustrate how important it is to control 
what we say. Think about how a small spark can set a big forest on fire. The tongue is also a fire. Fire can be a great thing. Imagine a cozy bonfire for toasting marshmallows. If you're outside on a freezing night, a blazing fire can even be life-saving. But those same flames can destroy life too. A tiny spark can flare into a huge wildfire within minutes. And that wildfire can race along at seven miles an hour through the forest or 14 miles an hour over grassland. It can destroy everything in its path. James wrote that we need to take our words as seriously as wildfire. Every word that comes out of your mouth has the power to give life and encouragement or to hurt and destroy. That is a huge responsibility. And there's no way you can fully control your words or yourself on your own. But if you ask for God's help, you will be given the power of God's spirit. And as James reminds us, you can choose your words wisely. And then what you say will begin to change your world for good. James compared our tongues, or our words, to the rudder of a ship and the bit of a horse. Small things that can make a big impact. And it's true. Think about it. How many times have words gotten you into trouble? You've talked back to a parent or someone else in charge. You got caught telling a lie. A friend overheard you talking about them behind their back. Ugh. Words matter. You know this. You've been hurt by words. How many times have someone else's words hurt your feelings? Someone called you a name. Someone told you a lie. Someone talked bad about you behind your back. Sometimes we're tempted to say things even though we know there are things we'll regret. The pressure just builds and builds and builds and... Uh. But wait. Words can be good, too. How many times has a compliment made you feel better? Or braver? Or more confident? How many times have you heard words of wisdom that helped you make a wise choice? Words are powerful, sure, but they don't always make a mess. They can make things better. But how? James went on to write that no one can tame the tongue. No one. Not you. Not me. No human being can control their words. That's why we need help from the Holy Spirit. When you put your trust in Jesus, God gives you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can help us cool down. Oh. Here's the one thing to remember today. God gives you the power to have self-control. So when the pressure's building and you feel like saying something you know you'll regret later, ugh, just stop and think. You can keep the lid on the bottle. With God's help, you can tame your tongue and control your words. Then you can sit back and enjoy a nice, cool, refreshing soft drink. Uh, I think I'll open this one instead. <laughs> Have a great summer! Well, that was unexpected. Now that we've heard today's Bible story, let's see if we remember what we learned today with our review game. First question, fill in the blank. God gives you the blank, 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 blank. What words fill in those blanks? It's all about our bottom line for today. And the answer is the power to have self-control. So God gives you the power to have self-control. Next question, what is a small part of our body but is big in power? Is it A, eyes, B, ears, or C, tongue. Which one do you think it is? A, B, or C? If you remember from our story today, the answer is C, the tongue. 
Next question. According to James, every word that comes out of the mouth has the power to do what? Is it A, tame you, B, build up and tear down, or C, none of the above? Which one do you think it is? A, B, or C? And the answer is B, build up and tear down. Our words can either build someone up and encourage them, or it can tear them down and make them feel sad. Question four, name at least five of the fruits of the Spirit, which we've been learning about all summer long. Can you name at least five of them? I'm going to name all of them. So if you said at least five of these, then you got the answer right. So the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Last question. What can happen if someone doesn't have self-control? What do you think? Here are a few examples that I came up with. You might have came up with something different. That doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, but here are some examples I came up with. They might say something that they didn't mean because they were mad. They might have a hard time waiting for something and lose their patience by yelling. Um, or they might take something from someone instead of taking turns and waiting. Um, that might be what happens when someone doesn't have self-control. But thank you so much for coming and spending today with us. I hope to see you all next week for our new series called Epic. And uh, let's listen to that last worship song. Thanks. Bye.